What may separate our group from the others is that we didn't know what problem we were trying to solve until after we began interviewing. It was then that we learned the current state of sports specialization doesn't always look out for what's best for these young athletes, which can lead to them burning out or becoming uninterested in their sport. In order to find out how to improve sports specialization and to limit this burnout, we interviewed an Illini coaching legend. Don Harden coached uh, women's volleyball for about uh, 30 years. A former Illini Olympian. Hi, I'm Justin Spring, uh, University of Illinois men's gymnastics head coach for the last nine years. And a current Illini athletic trainer. My name is Ann Danbury. I'm the athletic trainer for the men's gymnastics team at the University of Illinois. This diverse group allowed us to analyze sports specialization from multiple points of view and gain a better understanding of how to improve it. So what exactly is wrong with the current state of sports specialization? If they played and specialized early, unfortunately, a lot of clubs and private entities where they would get this kind of specialization are focused on competition mm -hmm. and showing trophies so that then they can gather more membership and mm -hmm. make more money. Of course. Well, to focus on competition at that young of an age, they basically overuse and they're not really building those athletes for future success. Mm -hmm. They're using them up for where they are now. Mm -hmm. um, and they're also using them out of position. They're not developing their skills. So just how quickly parents are specializing their kids in sports. And maybe it's not always parents, but like it just it is becoming very competitive very early on. Um, you know, a lot of people call it the Tiger Woods effect. Um, you know, I think that that was like this one big story that proved it works. You know, if you just raise your baby to be a golfer, he'll be the next Tiger Woods. And like, okay, so it worked for him, but for the other 200,000 people that have done that, it didn't. A lot of like the chronic overuse type injuries that you get. So like for runners, shin splints, or for baseball pitchers, they all have shoulder degeneration. For gymnastics, wrist issues, like things like that that are very sport specific because you're using a specific body part over and over and over again. What is burnout and how can it be prevented? You burn out when you stagnate, when you stop learning, when you start spending your time doing things that aren't getting you anywhere. You burn out at anything. It could be sport, it could be professionally. If you're not growing, if you're not developing, if you're not spending your time in ways that make a difference, you get burnout. Mm -hmm. And it's not the amount of time. It, you can put a little bit of time in and not want to do that anymore. So I, I think a lot of it is how we spend our time and being in programs that make that time work well mm -hmm. to where people are learning and advancing. And rest is a big part of it. You know, you need to honor a certain amount of uh, rejuvenation. Some guys are just in their own heads about anything and they're going to burn out in whatever pursuits they have. And so I, I think that, yes, I see burnout all the time, and I don't think that it's exclusive to one sport athletes. So I don't think it's exclusive to sports at all. I think that it's, it's just inherent with focusing relentlessly on something, driving towards a goal constantly and consistently, you're going to find burnout. And that you find that in, in the workforce, you find that in anything, anywhere, anywhere there's consistency, you're going to find that. Um, and that's hard to combat. It's hard to deal with. It's really hard to, I mean, honestly, that, like, the counter of that is empowering someone to be driven and motivated towards this cause. And how can we improve the current state of sports specialization? Our college, our department, one of the things I value in our model is we study models of sustainability in everything we do, whether it's recreation, parks, tourism, sport. Everyone you talk to will tell you the system is broken and it's not sustainable. My son's five. And he does gymnastics, but he does like three, four, five other things too. And I know that I'm this Olympian here, and I have an Olympic medal, and I started when I was three, and we should start training him to be an Olympian, you know. And like I don't, I don't, I don't believe in that. I think I want Cody to experience a lot of other sports, and at some point, um, it will be time to specialize, and that's going to be a tough decision. And it'll be a conversation with me and my wife. It'll be a conversation with me and Cody, and probably all three of us together. Focus on getting them a well-rounded experience and work on things like strength and mobility. So if, for example, you want to specialize in swimming, and that's the only sport you do, make sure you're doing stuff outside of swimming as well. In conclusion, the current way in which athletes specialize needs to be improved. 
This system is not sustainable because some of these year-round clubs are only looking out for their own success and financial gain, not the actual athletes themselves. When an athlete specializes at too early of an age, they run a higher risk of mentally and physically burning out. Young athletes should go out and try as many different sports as they can so they don't have to someday ask themselves, what if? When they finally find one that they love, they can open up a dialogue with their parents about specializing and focusing on it. Once they begin to specialize, they need to make sure they remain well-rounded as athletes to avoid overusing specific bones or muscles. If athletes take these steps in specializing, they will be much happier in their sport and their life.